This is Lewis Hart for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store and William Hill. Delighted today to be joined with Eddie Hearn at the Limehouse Boxing Academy. How are we, mate? I'm good, mate. Nice to see you, Lewis, because you're much better on the audio than Parsons, who's getting a little bit arrogant now, a little bit carried away and obviously messing up all the interviews. So good to be working with a real pro. Good to be working with a, with a top promoter, mate. And the, and the real... Number one promoter. Yeah, not no. the top. Yeah, okay, mate. Yeah, and, and working audio, hopefully, for this one. Don't want to jinx anything. We're here at the Limehouse Boxing Academy. Um, we've just had Matram giving back to the community. Um, how important is this for you to be coming here, giving back to you know people just at the grassroots level of their careers? You know what? These, these are the kind of days and kind of activities that actually put a smile on your face. You know, we've had a pretty rough week. You know, you go through a lot of shit in boxing. I love boxing. It's my absolute passion. But when you see people walking through the doors here... The politics, the backstabbing, you know, the purse bids, it's all irrelevant. I don't, you know, even the drug tested, that these kids aren't, they're not on Twitter debating all this stuff. They're finding boxing for the first time. And I keep saying to people, like, walking through the doors of a boxing club is not just about becoming a world champion. If you can, congratulations, and make sure you sign with me. But more importantly, it's about just changing your mindset and making positive movements in your life and as I keep saying about fitness and stuff like that there is no one in the world who hasn't become physically healthier and not improved their life there is no one that hasn't walked through the doors of a boxing club and not improved or changed their life do you know what I mean and like these kids in these communities you only got to look around and have a walk around this area to know that there's no opportunity but I promise you, if you come down here, it will change your mindset. You'll be making, you'll meet good people. You'll get good advice. And also, AJ used to say something all the time. And I never really got it too much, but I get it a lot more now. People who come down here, boxing's a big industry. So it's not just about being a fighter. You know, you can work as a trainer. You can work as a manager, a promoter, a lawyer. You can work in TV, in media. You can be a presenter. You can do what you guys do. Do you know what I mean? Boxing's given you an opportunity. You know, you, you love it. You've got a job and, and you've got a passion for what you do. It's very hard to find in life. So there's so many things that boxing can give you, but um, this place is unbelievable. I mean, this isn't just a boxing club, an ABC. This is a, a, a facility for dance and music. Uh, there's a doctor's surgery. There's educational facilities. There's counselling services here as well. And it's free. You know, so these are some of the things that the government are doing very well. We need to see more of it. But you need to see government people down here. Speak to the kids here and go, if you weren't here today, and don't forget it's summer holidays, what would you be up to? They go, and even, best case, they'd be on their phone, out of trouble. It's not even a best case, is it really? Or they'd be talking to people that are trying to get them to do that, trying to make bad decisions. And I don't, when they do make bad decisions, I don't even blame them, because there ain't no opportunities for them. But boxing will give you that, and it will just change your mindset. 100%. And you say there, you've been through so many doors, been to so many gyms, seen so many people. You see the impact that boxing has. Even a guy this weekend, you see AJ selling out O2, selling out stadiums. You just see how special that boxing can do for people. And as you said, whoever walks through the doors, it don't matter what your skin colour is, what your background is, you're, seen, you're, you're really right on how good you are. It's just hard work. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, and also it's about, the other thing I've been thinking about lately is about your limits. And I think sometimes you kind of misunderstand what your actual limits are or you don't have the vision to see what they are and I go back to like simple things like a run right we joke about the fight day 5k but I'll run that on Saturday and I will run 25 minutes no but I will and I'll be knackered right my heart will be beating through my chest do you think I can run faster than that or is that my limit it ain't really is it like how how much how far are you willing to go? How much are you prepared to push yourself? See when we done that plank competition today, there were people that were doing it for 16, 17 minutes. If there was no cameras, if there was no VIP tickets, they probably wouldn't do six or seven minutes. So you're capable of much more than you think in life. And I think boxing also shows you that, you know. And I love speaking to kids. Like there's a lot of kids who are fighting here for boxing for the first time or they've just started. And there's other kids that are 14, 15, 16 who are part of the England set up and, and like they come to me and they say, any advice? Like, and I say, listen, but they're so passionate about boxing. I know they're doing it already. And I just said, fundamental sacrifice. Everything. Eat, sleep, shit, boxing. Right? Train harder than anyone could ever imagine you can train. 
cut off negative people and friendships that aren't going to benefit you. No going out. No drinking. And that's hard for a 15, 16 year old to get their head around, you know. You have to have a passion for something so deep to be able to live that kind of lifestyle. But the fact is, is if you want to be at the top end of the sport, that's a sacrifice you've got to make. And I love seeing you know, kids say, I'm oh, just desperate to be, I want, I'm, you know, I'll do anything, I'll sacrifice anything, you know, and not everyone can do that. Some people just talk a good game, but, you know, just coming down here puts a smile on my face and, you know, makes me realise why I love boxing. I know you sort of chatted to Parsons yesterday, so I won't try, not go, try and keep it a little bit new for you, but we see, obviously, AJ out this weekend, and we see all the, the legacy that he's done. How influential do you think he's been for British boxing uh, at the position we're in now? I think this is one of the things, he, and he's not even searching for the credit, but... When you come down here, if you said to all those kids down here, most of them, what made you come down here? I, I, I know, because I asked some of them. Anthony Joshua. They can relate to Anthony Joshua. It's like, you know, me coming down here, we know my old man's got my... Like, I grew up in a nice house. Although they see me on TV and Instagram and stuff like that, I, I wasn't from here. You know, my old man was, but I wasn't. So I don't always feel comfortable telling you, it's okay, do this, and because... In that world, there's no opportunities. So I get the mentality of a kid saying, Fuck, no one cares about me. Fucking no one. What opportunity have I got other than to do this or run this package over here or make a few quid here or, you know. And I, I, I fully understand why they would do that. But if you can just get him in here, and the same with AJ, going down the wrong path, he needed something to save him. And it was boxing. I found boxing at what's 18. And didn't walk through Finchley ABC to win an Olympic medal or to win the World Heavyweight Championship. Just thought, I need to get fit. I need to get strong. I, you know, I think he actually said that he thought, I might end up in prison now. So I need to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm ready. And ended up finding a passion for boxing that still burns so bright today. And that's the amazing thing. And that's what, again, people don't necessarily understand about AJ. That same passion that first ignited him still exists in him today in Texas, working his bollocks off, doing everything to get an edge, to work hard, to outperform people. And you can only respect that. Anyone that gives everything in life, for whatever they do, you have to respect them, whatever level. You know, even the kids in here today, you are unbelievable respect for them. 13, 14, 15, doing my run tonight, I'm doing a strength and conditioning, I'm, you know. And I, I love it, I love to see someone that has a passion for something, and AJ still has that passion, that fire for boxing. And if you don't have that, when you've made your money and when you've won titles, you need to retire. But that's why I'm saying don't need to retire because he's still a great fighter and he loves what he does. I'm saying we'll just rattle off a couple now. And the message there was it was a really really good one. So I've sort of gone on other topics now. Um, yesterday we see the IBF ordered Maris Bradis against Jar Patai. Mm. Is it really now time for, to kick on for Jar Patai after sort of being time wasted? We're saying to the IBF, and this is you don't necessarily know the background, but we've requested a voluntary fight for Jai Apatai because he keeps waiting. Every time they order a purse bid, it's like another month. And when Mastanak pulled out, we said to the IBF, can we have a quick mandatory? And Richard Reactpool's team and Boxer's team complained, right? And they said, no, he can't because he has to fight us. So they went, you know, put in their legal letter, whatever, to stop Jai Apatai from fighting, only to pull out on the day of the purse bid and then waste Jai Apatai's time. And now he's got to go through the same situation with Maris Bradis. Maris Bradis is injured, as I understand. He's not even ready. So it's a bit frustrating, but we want Jai to get in the ring as soon as possible, and hopefully we can do that. Just last one, Marie, because I know I'm quick, to, quick for time. Um, two good friends of yours, Frank Warren and Simon Jordan, both went on the Simon Jordan's podcast, The Overlap. And Frank Warren was talking about just the man that we've spoken about there, Anthony Joshua, and how Tyson Fury didn't need to fight him for his legacy. And I'll read out the, the quote was, why is, Joshua, why is Joshua a legacy-defining fight? I don't agree with that. Joshua's had the crap kicked out of him. What's his last few fights? He's lost three of them. He's not a legacy-defining fighter for me. So when you look back on all the things that he's achieved and all the things that we listed off there, what he's done for the community, how do you react to sort of those comments from Warren? If, if Anthony Joshua was signed with Frank Warren, you can imagine what Frank Warren would be saying. Um, Tyson Fury is man. He wants to speak down about AJ. He's tried to sign him about 400 times throughout his career. Never got to work with him. Um, Tyson Fury is a great fighter. To, to, to be a modern day great, you have to beat all the top fighters in the division. Whatever way you want to rate AJ, the worst case scenario is he's a top five heavyweight in the world. Worst case. The best case is he's number three, probably at the moment. All right? So 
you got to go through those guys. If Tyson Fury doesn't beat Alexander Usyk, he is not a generational great. No way. And in that package, you should also include Anthony Joshua because then you beat all the guys. If he beats Usyk and beats AJ, he's up there with Lennox Lewis, one of the great heavyweights of all time. But does he want it? Does he actually want that legacy? And when you talk about Simon Jordan and Frank Warren, I mean, I saw a clip from it. I mean, watch the energy. It's like I love him, you know? And when you go back to, you know, we said about, it just concerns me that Simon Jordan's having conversations. I mean, it's just, it's how can we, how can we get Eddie Hearn? You know, which is okay. It's like, means that you're the absolute, as I said the other day, you're the absolute governor and people want to try and bring you down. But when you look at Simon and Frank, you know, it's friendly for him. But um, in terms of legacy, you have to be the best in the division. And when I look at Tyson Fury's resume, I'm bored of saying it. Go and look at it on BoxRec. Eddie, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, good to see you today, mate. Thank you.